Welcome to Your Retirement Blueprint, a podcast by 210 Financial. No matter who you are or where you are in life, having a plan for your finances matters. And that's what this show is all about. In each episode, we want to help you gain an understanding of where you are now and where you want to go from here. Hey, thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Your Retirement Blueprint podcast, the show that empowers you to create a life of financial confidence so that you can live your best life today. My name's Kendall Stahl, alongside my co-host, Mr. Phil Cooper. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching here. We're excited for uh, for the show today, but first of all, I just got to tell you, if you see me shivering, that's because I'm freezing to death right now. It's cold in here today. It really it's the, is. It's the water fasting. That's what I've decided. Oh, I got no, okay. got no food in my belly. To, too skinny, though. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Something like that. The camera adds 10 pounds, so it's, <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't either. All right. Well, speaking of, you know, uh, skinny and looking good, we're gonna, today we're going to talk about... <laughs> That was a bad segue. That was a bad segue. Let's. Th- I shouldn't have went there. No, you shouldn't have. Uh, uh, I think today what we really want to talk about on on the podcast, though, on a serious note, is what happens um, if you you know lose a spouse, divorce, um, something like that. So things to think through, consider. Um, you know, we could take this a thousand different ways. Um, so yeah, let's just start there. Sensitive topic for sure. Yeah. But it happens. We know that it happens. And as long as we've been serving folks here in, in uh, this industry, it happens, unfortunately, more regularly than, than everybody wants. It's never the intention of somebody getting married Yeah, to say, I'm only going to try this for a while, right? Right. This is a lifetime commitment. But then things happen. And so we do see this where the divorce happens and then it's a, there's a lot of now what's. Right. And I do think we need to address some of these topics because it is, um, it can be very, very sensitive. It can also be something that if it's not planned out or at least known about and you get some misguided information, it can really derail some of your financial plans. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that, and it's also, like you said, not something that you expect. So you're obviously not planning for it. Yeah, it's a shock. And so, system. yeah, so it changes things dramatically. Yeah. Um, and it could even be that, you know, the death of a spouse or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think it's kind of like, you know, where do you start sort of a thing? So I guess if it's divorce, it's a little bit different than if someone passes away, right? <laughs> we got to split things or we don't have to split things. And, and, um, a lot of folks come to us wanting, wanting advice on what to do there. And it's not something that we can really say, Hey, you know, you should take this and you should take that mm-hmm. different things like that. I think too, Kendall, a lot of times, whether it's a divorce or a death, yeah. They're both extremely high emotionally charged events. Yeah. One is a grief, I guess both of them are grieving processes. Mm-hmm. One is the, the loss of a spouse to an eternal passing away, but the other one could be the loss of dreams and, and reasoning and yeah. love and all those kind of things. So either way, it's a heavy emotionally charged event in somebody's life. Mm-hmm. It takes somebody to say, you deal with the emotional side. Yeah. Let us help you deal with the logical side of things. And a lot of times folks just are not in a position where they're able to remove the emotion. And so we step into the middle there and, and start to talk about logic, whether that's dividing of assets, helping them divide assets, mm-hmm. whether it's dealing with a new, now you're filing a single tax, pl- uh, tax return. It's a higher tax rate. Yeah. Could be a shock to the system there too. Or whether that's now planning on your legacy. Now, maybe your plan was to leave dollars to a certain individual or a group of, of kids or something, and now it's going to be, it's just different. Yeah. The point of that whole spiel is it's a heavily charged emotional event in somebody's life. It's good to get some people involved. They can give you wise counsel so you make logical decisions. Is that the is that kind of the advice then when you're in those emotional states seek outside counsel that can they can give you some level-headed opinion sort of a thing i do and i think that's a that's a biblical scriptural approach too as the scripture talks many many times about there is wisdom in the multitude of counsel Mm -hmm. you want somebody who can give counsel that's not engaged in your event yeah whether that's a friend who stands outside or whether Mm -hmm. that's an attorney a cpa an advisor like ourselves somebody who has nothing to gain in this 
but they can look into your life and go, there's a pitfall. Be careful of that one. Yeah. So what are the, what are the steps beyond the kind of the emotional side of it? So obviously that's probably one of the, the first things you got, you're going to have to deal with. Right. And so, so, and that's going to be an ongoing process. I mean, it's not just going to happen overnight. But aside from the emotional side of things, what are some of the other things, maybe first steps to start thinking about or or maybe even things that folks don't think about that we think maybe they should be thinking about? I think the first thing is a budget. Yeah. Because it used to be maybe there was two incomes in the home and one home you're supplying the need for. And now maybe you're down to one income and you've divided a home if it's in the event of a divorce. Right. And this person went that way and this person went that way. Well, now we have one income that's going to supply the needs for that particular home. And you're going to have to have a budget. Let's start with that. What's my income? Yeah. What are my expenses now that I'm doing this on my own? Mm -hmm. Do I have enough income to cover the expenses? Make sure you have that part in line first and foremost, because then if you don't have that, we always say all the time, if you, if you're grieving something and then you layer on top of that financial stress, it just compounds the issue. Yeah. So really, it's it's kind of in a way starting from ground zero. Maybe not ground zero, but you, if 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 it's a divorce or even if it's a death, right? Um, one way maybe we're splitting things up. The other way maybe we aren't. But we're also life looks completely different. So getting that budget, figuring out okay, here's the starting point. Here's where we think we're gonna be, right? And that's gonna be tough to do because we may or may not know what we're doing for housing or or kids or you know whatever the case may be. But getting that starting point, obviously, I think is very important. And then from there, it's kind of rethinking, which I think maybe this goes back to the emotional side of things. It's like rethinking now what is life, yeah, right? Yeah. Because it's going to look completely different. It is. And I think the thing, too, with that budget that it'll help you do is not only cover your monthly expenses, it allows you to still push into your own retirement plan. Yeah. Retirement is still coming, whether you're widowed, single or widowed, yeah. divorced, whatever, it's still coming. We have to make sure you're still plugging into that and making sure that budget allows for you to make contributions into your own plan. So then, I mean, in a way, it kind of just gets back to, okay, income planning, investment planning, tax planning, so on and so forth, like we always talk about. For us, advisor on the advisory side of the table, it's no different. Yeah. It's how much income, how much expense, how old are you, when do you want to retire, build that roadmap. That's called a financial plan. The person on the other side of the desk, it's a huge yeah. change of life. They add this direction and now they're doing it this direction and maybe living in a different place or no longer have the support of that individual they thought they were going to have or something. So it's a massive emotional thing. Different dreams. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. What are your thoughts on like, um, especially on the death side of things, you always hear folks talk about, Hey, don't make any big decisions for X amount of time yeah. or whatever. Do you think that's an important I think that's thing to think about? I think that's prudent. I think it's wise mm -hmm. that you almost instantly get somebody involved. Like we mentioned, get an advisor involved. That's wise. But let's not make massive decisions at that point. No make major changes. Just let somebody know, I'm grieving. Yeah. I've lost a spouse. Here's what our plan was. Lay it in front of that advisor and at least have them go, okay, there's no major changes need to be made right now. Why don't you go take care of the grieving process? Let's reconvene in six months or a year when you have more sure foundation underneath you. And I mean, I think that can be said for, for death or divorce. Probably so when you say the only time you might have to make some major decisions on the, on the divorce side of things is there might have to be assets that are split house. sooner than that period of time yeah. house. And it depends on how long you're married and what state right, yeah. I got half of that 401k and half of this. Some of those things have to be made. But after that, I would not make major decisions until you have gone through that process of emotionally grieving grieving and kind of rethinking, Hey, what does life look like from here on out? Yeah. Because, New because obviously, you know, if you want life to look one way or if you think life looks one way and then all of a sudden you're like, Oh, now I, now I have to rethink all this. And it could look a completely different way that obviously changes a lot of the, the, the planning that goes into sure it, it does. Yeah. It changes everything, it changes your, your whole perspective. It changes your whole direction. You know, like we've seen a lot of times where people don't even live in the same state any longer. You know, they <laughs> now you got a different set of rules. We're following a different state. Yeah. So I just say be very cautious on making wild, massive decisions early on. 
Let's talk about um, some things, and this is maybe kind of just off the top of our head. What are some some things that maybe change that folks aren't going to think about um, but need to be thinking about? I think the first one I mentioned a little bit ago is if you're divorced or recently widowed or widowered, you're now going to have to file your tax return at a single filing status and potentially have a lot more income tax due. That's a one that catches a lot of folks off guard. Um, child care. And maybe you're going to be dealing with child care. It's going to happen with the kids. You used to have the shared responsibility you may not, may or may not have. Mm-hmm. New place to live, new environment, those kind of things. There's a lot of new, everything's new in that situation. As we talk through this, I more and more, it just, it comes back to the emotional side of things. That's all, that's the, that's the change, the grieving, the, yeah. the things that probably are going to hit you that you didn't even, first of all, you didn't think you were going to be in this position in the first place. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, and you've never maybe ever been there. And so you don't know what it's like or what it feels like or what you're going to go through. And a lot of times too, can along those lines is a lot of times if you've got a married couple, one person was extremely strong in understanding and wanting to understand the financial plan. And the other person maybe was disconnected from it because they didn't have to do it. Yeah. And now you've got to pick up whether you were that person who loved it or the person who didn't like it. You've got the full responsibility of making sure you're doing it. You tell a story all the time of, of the widow that came to the firm and had no idea yeah. what her yeah. finances were. That was a sad day that turned into be a bright spot for her, but she was from the generation mm-hmm. that the man was the breadwinner and handled all of the finances in the home. Well, that generation, thankfully, has come and gone, I believe, or there's equal responsibilities, equal caliber of um, gals are, earn as much as guys. I love that. But back in the day, it wasn't that way. Right. And her husband passed away. I went to her home. I sat at her kitchen table for two days mm-hmm. Had a cardboard box on my right and a cardboard box on my left. One was trash. Yeah. We don't need this. And I went through this dining room table full of papers that were stacked about this high. All that was, was her husband had stored all that stuff through the years yeah. She had no idea what it was, and I sat there for two days and looked at each paper and said, keep this one, throw this one away, keep this one, throw this one away. About halfway through that process, I noticed that she was extremely emotional, and she looked at me with tears in her eyes, and she said, do I have enough money to buy groceries? And I'm looking at this, these assets that she have, and I'm thinking, you have enough money to buy the grocery store, but she didn't she no know idea. that. Yeah. And so now all of a sudden she went from never ever having to deal with that to wondering if she's buying groceries. Yeah. And so somebody else stepped into the middle there that had complete logic and not a lot of emotion that was able to say, it's all going to be okay. Yeah. But I think one of the lessons to learn there is, hey, maybe we should try to get on the same page a little yeah. more. That's why we always encourage married couples. We want both of you at that meeting. Yeah. We want everyone to have an understanding of what's going on in their financial life just in case. Yeah, and if they don't, and if a lot of times they, one of them doesn't like it, mm-hmm. it's just not their thing, mm-hmm. right? And the other one likes it more. So I think that person that doesn't like it, it's fine for the the other individual to kind of take control, so to speak, and and do it. But like, needs to keep the the individual that doesn't like it informed, Share keep the them on top of of yeah. things, right? That's why we always like to have both um, individuals there because if something does happen to one of them. Um, you know, the, the person that just doesn't like doing it, you know, they've got a relationship built there to where they've got someone in their corner yeah. to kind of help them I agree. through that. And I'm guessing in my marriage is probably very normal, I would say, where one of the spouses is, uh, enjoys doing one thing in the home yeah. and the other one doesn't. I'm the yeah. guy who doesn't, you know, right. I don't do a lot of things in the home <laughs> But is this I, hitting home for you right now? <laughs> You're like, if something happens to my wife, I don't know if I can yeah. buy groceries. You got anything on your calendar? You think I, you and I can meet and we can talk about this? No, if one of us were to pass away, though, I I would at least have a working knowledge to know I can buy groceries. How's that sound? I would at least know that. Okay. Uh, this is funny because it happened fairly recently in our home. When I said to my spouse, Miss Kelly, I said, you know, how much do we pay for, you know, I think it was like a light bill or something. And yeah. she goes, I don't know. It just happens automatically. I go, well, what happens if you're gone? How do I know that happens automatically? <laughs> and she said to me, well, the lights are going to turn out. You'll know if we're going to quickly. <laughs> That's um, not how I want to find out. <laughs> Can we please have some information sharing here? I want to know I'm going to have lights on in this house. Oh, I love Kelly really cares. She's like, yeah, you, he doesn't need lights. Yeah, It'll be all right. He'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll make it. 
<laughs> it's the truth, though. Being on the same page, I think, is yeah, super important. You need to know. Yeah. Okay. Anything else come top of mind? Uh, I, yes, I think so. Back to if you are experiencing the recent life change or something like this, my mm-hmm. best advice, I think, to give you would be to get somebody involved that can give oversight and logic to a very emotionally charged situation. I think that's good. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap it up with some This Week in History. All right. So This Week in History, night or er, no, 1873, the New York Stock Exchange closed for the first time in its history due to a banking crisis triggered by the financial panic of 1873. Well, wow. There you go. Let's see what else we got. To this week in history, 2001, terrorists hijacked and crashed planes into the World Trade Towers in the Pentagon, killing 2,752 people. Tragic day. Yeah. That's one of those events when you ask people who lived through that, where were you when? They'll know exactly where they were that day. You know where I was? I was, I saw I grew up without a TV, and it was like midday where we, you know, knew this, (laughs) right? Because we didn't have a TV. One of my mom's friends called her, and she said, turn the radio on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> and we had one of those ones that mounted up under the cabinet. Yeah. And I don't know why I remember this, but literally that day I laid on the countertop, and I still remember I didn't have a shirt on because I can still feel how cold the countertop was. Hmm. Anyways, didn't forget it. Well, it's ingrained in your mind. Yeah. Certainly events like that will stick with you forever. Good deal. All right, well... That's a wrap for today. So feel free to continue to follow along with us. If you guys like this information, if it's helpful to you, um, if you want to be notified when we upload more information, don't forget to hit the like or the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you for listening to Your Retirement Blueprint. We hope today's episode helped you gain a better grasp of your finances and clarified a possible path forward in your life. This show is brought to you by 210 Financial, and our team is passionate about helping individuals and families achieve their ideal retirements. If you'd like to talk more about your financial plan, we'd love to talk to you. You can learn more and schedule a call at 210financial.com. Again, that's www.210financial.com. We can't wait to see you right back here next time on this show.